Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, it's Gorillas and Heels. So good to see y'all again. It seems like everyone is traveling to Japan recently because it's a Kura season. Today I want to speak about 10 things that you need to check out if you're in Japan. And these are items ranging from accessories, clothing, shoes, and even kitchenware. So let's get started. The first brand to check out is Onisuka Tiger. I always go to the store in Omonti Sando in Tokyo. And as you know, Onisuka Tigers is a brand that started in Japan. Most of its shoes are created in Southeast Asia, so in Indonesia and Vietnam. But what I like is that next to the main Onisuka Tiger store, they actually have a whole store dedicated to Nippon made shoes. So these shoes are produced, sewn, end-to-end -end made in Japan and my husband is a big big fan of the Nippon made shoes. In terms of stitching, materials, sewing, quality is much higher. My husband has tried both the Southeast Asian made ones as well as the Nippon made ones and he says that the comfort level is so much better for the Nippon made ones. So for those of you who know me, I'm not really a sneakers kind of person but Onisuka Tigers is where I found the only pair of sneakers that I've been wearing for seven years. I did not buy the Nippon made ones. Um, I bought the ones that were made in Indonesia but they are plain white sneakers. They are so comfortable and I've been wearing them all around the world. They finally gave way in my last trip to France so I do need to replace them. Another thing to also note is that in the Omonti Sando store, you can actually custom make your own Nippon made shoes. So you can choose the color combination and it takes about six to seven weeks for them to produce and they are able to ship overseas um, to wherever you are. Second item to check out is secondhand Burberry stuff. So Japanese love Burberry and as you know, they really keep their things in very good quality. This was the store in Omonti Sando. I'm going to try to find the name and address of the store and put it down in the description box. But I found this Burberry scarf um, and just to show you, I've been wearing this Burberry scarf for about almost 10 years now. So I bought this in London. So I'm very familiar with the quality of cashmere that Burberry scarves come in. So when I saw this in the Omonti Sando store, it was going for 30 US dollars and I really couldn't believe the price. So I went to the sales staff and I asked if it's genuine and he said that the reason that prices are so low is because the company does not do very thorough checks on the authenticity of the items but from his experience, he strongly believes that it's authentic. So I bought one anyway because I wanted a different colorway and I thought that you know the blue is quite classic as well and honestly, it's so warm and it feels exactly the same as the scarf that I have. I also bought a Burberry shirt for my mother-in-law for about 40 US dollars and she loves it so much. There were a lot of scarves. The blue scarves were going for about 20 to 30 US dollars and the one in the classic colorway was about two times that price. There are a lot of things in the store. It's not nicely displayed at all. You do have to dig through, but I guess that's part of the fun. The third brand to check out is this brand called Odette et Odile. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. This is a Japanese brand and it's under United Arrows and the shoes are so comfortable. So every time I head back to Japan, I do make sure that I buy a pair of shoes from Odette et Odile. They do a full range of shoes from sandals to palms to flats, cord shoes and even boots. So I'm going to show you the pairs that I have from that brand. This brown pair that you see here, it's a pair of boots that I bought six years ago and they have been super well lasting. I've traveled with them. They are made of very good quality. What I love about the shoes is a majority of their shoes are produced in Japan. So if you're particular about this like me, um, I always check that the shoes are made in Japan. So recently I also picked up these suede palms and these suede black booties and they are honestly so comfortable. Do check out the corresponding Japanese size because Japanese size is a little bit different from UK and US. Let me put a chart here showing the corresponding sizes so that you are familiar with the Japanese sizing. One service which I really appreciate is that if you are in between sizes, what the sales associate can do is that 
they can help you sew a cushioning in the sole of the shoe so that it fits you perfectly. So it's not just something that you stuff into your shoe. What they actually do is that they put it under the sole and they sew it on so that it's a lot more comfortable. So this service takes about a few hours. You can actually leave it with them, walk around and then come back to pick up the shoe. They retail for anywhere between 100 to 200 US dollars and I think that it's a very good price for what you're getting. Fourth item that I would recommend checking out is tweed jackets. I love tweed jackets. I think that they are very classic. I cannot imagine spending $5,000 on the Chanel tweed jacket. Sometimes you can find tweed jackets made from high street brands like Mango and Zara. But what I do not like about the tweed jackets from those brands are that sometimes they come with very chunky metal buttons that make the jackets look very cheap. Japan has a huge variety of them. They're not exactly cheap. They retail anywhere from 150 US dollars to 300 US dollars, but I find them to be extremely well made. I usually go to the Shibuya area to shop. You can find them in a lot of different stores, but the one that I bought from is this brand called Carl Park Lane, and they have so much variety. What I also like is that it's fully made in Japan. The quality is really good and you can tell that it is very, very well made. So when I put it on, it fits me perfectly. And I also like that the cutting of the opening has a slight curve, which makes it look really elegant. So I would say that not all Japanese clothing fits my style, but work jackets and tweed jackets are something that I really appreciate. The fifth item that I would recommend is kitchenware. So you can find a lot of kitchenware in the Kapabashi area in Tokyo. So it's a little bit further out, but it's really worth going if you need to stock up for items in your kitchen. So I bought a lot of bowls and plates from that area and I can't believe I actually lugged them all the way back to London seven years ago and these only retail for about four to five US dollars per piece so it's very affordable and you can actually find the traditional Japanese bowls and plates where it has a lot more color and picture but I prefer the ones that have a more modern take to it. Something to also share is that I saw Noma, the Japanese restaurant, using the exact same bowls and plates. So I'm really happy that I managed to get them at a steal in Japan. Still on the item of kitchenware is porcelain spoons. So I got a couple of these from Takashimaya. And what I really like is that the shape of these soup spoons are so elegant. It also has this little hook which you can hook onto your bowl so that it doesn't slide down, especially if you're drinking soup. If you're not a fan of porcelain, you can also find these kind of wooden spoons in a lot of stores. So they are even in the subway stations. I think that they are very useful, especially if you have children, because they're so light and it doesn't break easily. The next item are chopsticks. What I love is that there's so much variety. I have a few. Lighter ones are made of oak and the darker ones are made of maple and cherry. What's also interesting is that they have so many different sizes. So as you can see, there's a men's version which is much thicker and there's a women's version which is much thinner. I got these oak ones for about one to two US dollars per pair. Seventh item is matcha. So I'm a huge, huge, huge matcha lover. I do not drink coffee at all, but I need to have a cup of matcha every single day. It really perks me up and I love the taste of matcha. So matcha in Europe can be really expensive. The color of the matcha that you get in Asian supermarkets in Europe, it's not as green. Um, matcha has been in Japanese tradition and culture for the last 800 years. It's supposedly very good for your health. There's supposedly a lot of antioxidants. Honestly, it's hard for me to differentiate the different grades of matcha in Japan. But what I usually do is I usually go to the store and ask the sales staff what they recommend and I'll buy a small bottle each time. So you can actually find this in the food levels of Takashimaya, Isetan, Matsukoshi. I'm not fixated on a specific brand, but I do try out whatever the salesperson recommends me. 
The eighth item to check out would be Japanese fabrics and cushions. So these are actually floor cushions, but I use them as a regular cushion. And what I love about Japanese fabric is that the quality is so good. I cannot stress this enough. The pattern is also super unique. So I picked out this olive green one and this cream colored one in my last trip are also very handy when we have guests over and if we just want to sit on the floor to have tea and have a little chat they make for really good floor seats as well so if your luggage has enough space i do recommend checking this out they were so good that when we got back we decided to buy a futon which is a little day mattress for my son and the shop owner very kindly shipped it to us from Kyoto. The next brand to check out is Gu. I know many of you are familiar with Uniqlo. Gu is the sister brand of Uniqlo and it's also a brand from Japan. You can actually find it almost everywhere that you see Uniqlo. It is trendier and the prices of the clothing is about a third to half of that of Uniqlo. So if you are looking for casual wear, this is a good store that you may want to check out. So the last brand to check out is Porter Yoshida. My husband is a huge fan of their products. They make wallet accessories as well as bags for both men and women. I would say that the style is very minimalistic and cool. So the material is nylon and it's very light and waterproof. So the brand was founded in 1962, I believe. The story is that the owner Yoshida actually survived an earthquake that destroyed Tokyo in 1923 and he did manage to salvage some of his items by tying a cord to these things and putting it across his shoulders and that prompted his motto that a bag should be first of all a tool to carry goods. It's much more affordable if you buy it from Japan itself given that it's produced and headquartered there. That's it to my video. Thank you all for watching. I hope that you found this useful. If you're not already subscribed, please subscribe to my channel. And if you know of any other items or brands that we should check out, please leave a comment down in the box below. I would love to check it out the next time I'm in Japan. Have a good week ahead and I'll see you in my next video. Take care and goodbye.